האם זה באמת סגולה בדוקה? הסגולה ללמוד בזה? ערב טוב וגוד איבנינג אבריוואן, אנחנו נזרע שמשון על פרשס וייירה and we're doing Os Gimel, section number three. In order to uh, understand this uh, piece in the Zer Shimshon, we're going to need to look at uh, a Pasuk from our Parsha, Parsha's Vayera, and also a couple of Stukim from Parsha's Emor, which, you'll, which we'll get to in just a moment. So let us begin, first of all, with uh, the Pasuk in our Parsha, which is Perak Yudches Pasuk Dalid. This Pusik is dealing with uh, Avraham's reaction to the appearance of the Malachim, who, who look like travelers coming by, three travelers coming by. So Avraham stops them and does everything he can to persuade them to, to come uh, stay with him so he can uh, take care of them and show them hospitality. So the Pusik Dalit says, You kachna ma'at mayim, let there be taken now for you a little bit of water, so you can, uh, and, and, and uh, we'll wash, uh, and you can wash your feet, and then recline or lean under the tree. So Avraham invites them to uh, refresh themselves, wash their feet, and then come sit under a tree in the shade, uh, be, to be shaded, to be protected from the hot sun, so that he can then, of course, Uh, feed them a sumptuous meal. That's the Pasuk in our Parsha. Now, let's listen to two Pesukim in Parshas Emor that have to do with the ha, uh, Chag HaSukos, the holiday of Sukkos. This is Perek Vayikra, Perek Chof Gimel, Pesukim Mem Beis and Mem, Mem Gimel. Basukos Teshvu Shivas Yomim, in booths you should dwell for seven days, call ha'ezrach b'Yisrael, all citizens amongst the Jewish people, yeshvu basukos, should dwell in these booths. Next pasuk, l'ma'an yedu doro seichem, in order that your generation should know, ki basukos hoshavti es b'nei Yisrael, that I uh, cause the Jewish people to dwell in booths, behotzi'i osa me'eretz mitzrayim, when I took them out from the land of Mitzrayim, Ani Hashem Elokechem, I am Hashem, your God. So that's, uh, those are the two psukim. And of course, if you're wondering what in the world does, uh, does what we're learning in, about Avram and the Malachim have to do with the holiday of Sukkot, that's uh, uh, only the Zer Shimshon could put those things together. So we'll, we'll see as we study this piece, God willing, uh, we'll see the connection very clearly. Okay, let's get right into the Zer Shimshon. Os Gimel. Pasuk. The Pasuk says, V'hishanu tachas ha'etz. Avram said to the Malachim, come recline under the tree. V'chule, etc. Makshim, so people ask, V'chihai gavra ke'avraham. And such a great man as Avraham. Lo ha'yilo lehoshiv osan al kise derech kavod. Should he not have Uh, brought out chairs for them to sit on in a more honorable manner, as opposed to sitting under a tree. Why not give them a chair? Give each, give each a traveler a chair. Oh, or Lama Lohoshiv Osan Beveso. Why didn't he do even go even a step further and bring them into his house? Why have them sit outside under a tree? Why not bring them and invite them into his home? Ubiprat and specifically la'achar sherachatzura glehem after they wash their feet, so that's a reference to the fact. And Rashi brings it down that why did why did uh, Avraham uh, make sure and emphasize bringing them water to wash their feet? So Rashi says this was according according Chazal. This was not only uh, this was not only a Uh, way of, uh, of showing hospitality, demonstrating hospitality, but it was also a way for them to remove the sand of Avodazar of idol worshiper, he, of idol worship. He assumed that they were, uh, were idol worshipers and he wanted them to remove the sand from their feet uh, that could have come from a place of uh, idolatry. And so the Zer Shimshon says, after they wash their feet and, you, and, and they've removed the uh, dirt that might have come from a place of uh, idol worship, certainly he should have felt comfortable bringing them into his house. So please keep in mind that the Zer Shimshon opens the piece with two specific questions. 
both having to do with uh, the words in the Pasuk about, about Avram inviting the Malachim to recline under a tree. Question one is, Avram was a wealthy man and an important prominent man. Couldn't he have brought them chairs to sit in? And number two, even, even better than that, why didn't Avram invite them into the house, uh, which would have been seemingly even more hospitable and more appropriate and more honorable uh, for, for, these, uh, for these passerby, for these travelers? So those are the two questions. Continuing in the next paragraph, V'yuvan behakdim my de'isa b'medrish. This can be understood with what we will begin with a statement from the Medrash. Call Masha Osa Avraham Lamalachim, everything that Avraham did for the Malachim, Para Hakadish Barhu Lebanov Biitsiosa Mimitrain. Hashem repaid him by doing similar things for his children on behalf of his descendants when they left. Mitzrayim. And examples are an example is given. Be Avraham Ksiv regarding Avraham, the Torah writes, Vihishanu Tachasa Eitz. And Avraham said to the travelers, Come recline under the tree. Sha'asa Lahem Sukkah. This means he made a protective covering for them. He made a, a, a booth, a sukkah for them. Ve Hakodish Barhu Asa Sukkos Labanov and Hashem. Uh, to repay Avraham for his hospitality, made booths uh, and protective coverings for Avraham's descendants, be it in Mitzrayim, when they departed Mitzrayim. Shenemar, as the Pusuk says, Ki basukos hoshafti as b'nei Yisrael, because I caused b'nei Yisrael to dwell in booths, v'hotzi osami eretz Mitzrayim, when I brought them out from the land of Mitzrayim. Ad Khan Lashono, until here is a quote from the Medrash Rabbah. So we see here an amazing idea uh, that connects the story of Avram Avinu and the Malachim and our Parsha of Vayera, and our Parsha of Vayera to the whole uh, story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the whole story of the Exodus from Egypt. And the connection is clear that Hashem repaid Avraham for each and every aspect and part of his hospitality and his, ser and his uh, serving uh, the Malachim uh, by doing special things for Abraham's descendants when Hashem took them out of Mitzrayim. So the Zer Shimshon continues. At first glance, this Medrash is amazing, is wondrous, meaning hard to understand. What did Avraham see to make for them a, a, an outdoor kind of covering? And why didn't he bring them into his home? So the Zerah Shimshon says the same questions that we asked uh, originally in the first paragraph in the beginning of the piece really apply to this Medrash more directly because the Medrash makes the direct connection between uh, Avraham's welcoming the guests and his treatment of, the, of his guests with uh, what, uh, what HaKadosh Baruch Hu did for his descendants. So Avraham certainly, therefore, should have gone even farther, even further in terms of welcoming the guests and, has, and brought them into his home so that apparently Hashem would do even more for his descendants when they left Mitzrayim. Let us continue. Next paragraph. Ella Sha'af al Hapasuk Atzmo Kosha. However, the Zer Shimshon says, besides that question, there's really a, a, a direct question on the Pasuk itself. Dixiv, because it's written, Leman Yedu Doro Sechem, in order for your generations to know, Ki Besukos Hoshavti, I made the Bene Israel dwell in Sukkos, Vechule, etc. Shehem Anane Hakavo, this is a reference to the clouds of glory, glory. Shehi Kifam, that Hashem surrounded Bnei Yisrael with, Leval Yakem Sharav Vashemesh, in order that they should not be hurt, they should not be struck with the heat and the sun, that, that, that uh, the hot winds and the sun of the, of the desert shouldn't harm them. Hashem protected them with the Anane Hakavo, with the clouds of glory. 
ki deis ki deisa bemedrash, as it states in the medrash Yalkut Shimoni, uve tor orachayim, and in the tor on orachayim reisha, section orachayim reisha ilchus sukkah, the beginning of the laws of sukkah, this is what's stated. Vehine, and behold, anane hakavod hoyu bischus aharo. The clouds of glory were, were uh, given by Hashem to protect the Jewish people, to surround the Jewish people in the merit of Aharon HaKohen. Uman and the mon, the, uh, the, the food that came down for the people to eat, came down from, uh, for the people to eat, came down from the, the sky, Bizchus Moshe. This was in the merit of Moshe Rabbeinu. Ube'er and the well of water that traveled with B'nai Yisrael in the Midbar, Bizchus Miriam, was in the merit of Miriam. V'lomo rotza HaKadosh Baruch Hu she'yasu zecher, and why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu want to make a commemoration l'ma she'bo bizchuso shel Aaron, to what came in the merit of Aaron, meaning to the Anone HaKavod, v'lo l'mon u'be'er nami, and not something to remember the mon that came in the schus of Moshe Rabbeinu, and the... And, and the water in the well that came in the merit of uh, Miriam. So the Zer Shimshon is saying, we have our own problem. And he's now stated his, his problem or his query two times. And that is, why didn't Avraham do more, show more honor apparently for the Malachim by either bringing them chairs or even better, bringing them into the house? That's his, uh, his, uh, the questions that he's posed. Uh, but then he says, you know what, on the Pusik itself, there's a question. And, and that's because the Pusik refers to, uh, to, to B'nai Yisrael uh, needing, having a requirement to remember and recall the fact that Hashem surrounded them with the Anone HaKavot. And so the Zerah Shimshon says, right there, we should stop and say, why only the Anone HaKavot? Why didn't Hashem also... Uh, do something that would be a zecher for the future generation so that we would remember the mun and that we would remember the be'er, the, 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 uh, the well, uh, the first one being in the schus of Moshe and the second one being in the schus and the merit of Miriam. Why weren't those things talked about in addition to the anane akavod, which were beschus Aaron hakohen? Last paragraph in this column. The hello, Hamon Hayamozon Ruchani. And isn't it so that the mon was a spiritual food? Shehechin Libom Latora, which which by its consumption prepared the hearts of the Jewish people to receive the Torah. Vahoyanes Godol, and it was a great miracle, the whole phenomenon of the mon. Was, uh, was a tremendous um, a miracle. Ad she'amru zichram levracha, until the point that Chazal said in the Medrash Tanfuma, lo nitna ha-Torah ela le'ochle haman. The Torah was only given to people who ate the man. It was a prerequisite to receive, eating the man was a prerequisite to receiving the Torah. Shehoye nivla be'evarim because the mun was this spiritual power food that was absorbed into the limbs of the bodies of B'nai Yisrael at that time. V'chein ha-be'er, and so to the well of Miriam, ha-yu ha-mayim merapim gufa mikol machala v'nega. The water not only quenched their thirst and gave them and allowed them to survive, it also healed their bodies from every illness and every type of uh, pain. Kemosha Amru HaMidrashim, as the Midrashim say, moving to the top of the next column, Shemisha Pogea Bebeira Shel Miriam, that someone who encountered the waters in the well of Miriam, Misrape Miyad, would be healed immediately, Mikol Tachluov, from all of his illnesses and sicknesses. So you see that the mon, the Zer Shimshon is making the point that the mon uh, not only fed the Jewish people, but, but was a spiritual, uh, as we said, a spiritual kind of uh, uh, nutrition and food that prepared them to receive the Torah. 
It gave them a special pure spiritual capacity that became a prerequisite to receiving the Torah. And the water from Miriam not only uh, helped them survive in the desert, but it also healed them from sicknesses and illnesses. So the Zer Shimshon is strengthening his question, why did the Torah not choose to recall those things as well as the Anane Hakavo? The ode, and another question we can ask on the, on the psukim about the uh, sukkos, my ichbas lon ladas im elu hasukos also lahem tekef pitsesomimitrayim. Why does it matter to us to know that Hashem made the sukkos, the booths for B'nai Yisrael, uh, recalling the Anane HaKavod, and, and I'm sorry, uh, uh, and the Anane HaKavod actually, when they left Mitzrayim, uh, or whether or not Hashem did that at some point later in the Midbar. Why does the Pasuk emphasize that Hashem provided the Anane HaKavod in the protection for B'nai Yisrael right directly after they left uh, Mitzrayim? The Lama D.A. Kra, and why was the Pasuk careful, Lomar, to say, Laman Yedu, in order that the future generation should know, Vichule, Ki besukos, that I caused them to dwell in these booths, Behotzi Osamer Mitzrayim, when I took them out from the land of Mitzrayim, Demashma, which implies Sheikar Hayediyo, the main fact that the future generations need to be cognizant of. Is that Hashem uh, protected them and surrounded them with the Anane Akobot immediately upon their exodus from Mitzrayim? And that's a detail, as Ere Shimshon says, that is, uh, seems to be unnecessary. Why is so much importance given to the fact that the Anane Akobot were provided immediately upon B'nai Yisrael leaving Mitzrayim? What if Hashem had only provided it a week later or a month later? Would that not still have been uh, an equivalent miracle and an equivalent chesed that it would still be worthy of, of future generations uh, remembering uh, why, why is it, why does the Torah focus on the fact that the protection was provided right after B'nai Yisrael uh, left Mitzrayim? El but definitely Tzorich Lomar, we need to say, Shetam Godo v'sod prati yesh be'elu hasukos, that there is a great reason and a hidden specific secret or mystery present in these sukkos, in these booths. The Amrinan b'medrash, because we say in the medrash, lama tziva ha-kodesh baruchu li Yisrael la-so sukkah tekef achar yom ha Why are we commanded, why does Hashem command to, uh, for us, for B'nai Yisrael, to make sukkos, to make booths, and to, and to dwell in them immediately after yom ha Yom Kippur, of course, is, uh, is celebrated on the 10th of Tishrei. And only five days later, on the 15th of Tishrei, the uh, holiday of Sukkah starts in the midst of dwelling in the Sukkah. So the Medrash and the Psik, and the psik that there of Kahana asks, why uh, is the mitzvah of Sukkah so close upon? Why does it follow so close upon Yom Kippur? And the answer that's given is uh, is if B'nai Yisrael uh, are obligated to suffer the punishment, the onish of exile on Yom Kippur, because of their sins, they can go out and exile themselves, so to speak, from their houses into their sukkah. The Yechoshev Lahem Ke'ilu Galu, and this will be considered for them as if they were given the Onesh, the real punishment of exile from their homes. And this is what is said in the prayer that some people recite before they enter their sukkah, which and now the Zer Shimshon quotes from that tefillah. 
and the merit of my going out from my home to the outside, to dwell outside in my sukkah, Yechoshev li bozeh should be considered for me through this, ki ilu hirkakti nodud, as if I'm going far from my home and wandering around, as if I'm actually suffering a punishment of real exile and wandering around far from my home, it, that should be uh, considered uh, for me uh, when I move from my home into the sukkah. So the Zer Shimshon uh, says to us that in order to understand and answer all of the questions we've asked, we need to first uh, understand this uh, secret uh, mystery of the sukkah, and that is that uh, the sukkah represents a kind of gullus replacement, a, a, a uh, replacement for an actual exile so that on Yom Kippur, if the Jewish people, chas v'sholem, or, or even parts of the Jewish people or individuals amongst the Jewish people uh, are given on Yom Kippur, are judged by Hashem to be deserving of gullus, uh, they won't have to suffer a real gullus, a real exile out into the wild, out into the unknown, out into faraway places, but rather they will, Hashem will accept their, uh, their pseudo-exile going from their homes out to their sukkos as, as a fulfillment of this punishment. And he continues, Vehine Omru, and behold, the Chazal said, and Mesechta Vodazara Sheim Yisrael Lo Osuha Egel, if, if Bnei Yisrael had not committed the sin of the Egel Hazahov, Lo Hoyulahem Od Shibud Malchios then they would never in all of their future suffered from being under the domination of other powers, of other countries, meaning they never would have suffered gulls. So after B'nai Yisrael left Mitzrayim, had they not committed the Chet HaEgel, Chazal teach us that there would have been no uh, more periods of exile, no more suffering similar akin to what happened in Mitzrayim, no more subjugation to foreign nations. V'hachi nami kroksi, and the Gemara Navodah Zara quotes uh, a Pasuk or brings down a Pasuk from Tehillim. Ani amarti Elohim atem. I said you were like Elohim, and that Pasuk means you, and that Pasuk in the context that, that the Gemara understands that it means you were like Malachim, you were like angels. And the Gemara Navodah Zara says that is referring, that Pasuk in Tehillim and is referring to B'nai Yisrael after they received the Torah, and at that point, they were considered like Malachim. They were on such a high spiritual level, such a high madrega, that they were considered like Malachim. And that's what the Repusuk is referring to. Uh, and the Zer Shimshon is quoting that Gemara to say that uh, as just as Malachim could never suffer from Shibud Malchios, could never conceivably suffer from being subjugated by other nations, so too Klal Yisrael, B'nai Yisrael would never have suffered Shibud Malchios after they received the Torah, were it not for the Chet HaEgel. The Ode, in another quote, another source in Chazal to support this idea, comes from Maseches Erevin, where it says, Chorus al haluchos, that the words were carved on the tablets, the Gemara says, Cherus Mishibud Malchios. This means that after they received the Luchos, they were free. Cherus, read the word Cherus instead of Chorus. B'nai Yisrael was free from being subjugated to any other power or any other nations. Again, uh, if they had not committed the Chet HaEgel, as the Zer Shimshon continues. She'im ha-golus kfar nigzar alehem v'bris bein ha-besarim. If the exile of the Jewish people had already been decreed upon them during the Brisbane Abbasarim uh, back in the time of Avram Avinu, Umi Kolshkein, and how much more so, Lefidas Hamaforshim, according to the opinion uh, of those commentators, Shelefi, Shelohishlimo Haminyan, who hold that because the number, the specific number of years shall tough Lamed of 430 Shona. Uh, years in Mitzrayim, since Bnei Yisrael did not complete that number of years, that's why it was necessary for them to suffer other exiles after, uh, after the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, after leaving Mitzrayim. 
So had they not made the Egel, how would it have been possible for them to complete the number of years? Meaning the Zer Shimshon is saying, how can the Gemara Navod Zara and the Gemara Masech, the Erevin, tell us, teach us this idea, this concept, that had B'nai Yisrael not committed the Chet HaEgel, they never would have suffered the any further subjugations by other nations, and they wouldn't have suffered from any further uh, Golos exiles. How can that be when we have sources that teach us that when they let when B'nai Yisrael left Mitzrayim, they had to undergo further experiences of Shibud Malchus and Golos because they didn't complete the 430 years uh, prophesied in the Brisbane Abbasarim. So how how would that have worked? How could they not have, how could they have been spared any future uh, Shibud Malchios? Bottom paragraph, Elevadai, but definitely Shemishum Hachi, because of this, take of Shehotziyam in Mitzrayim Kodem Zmanam, as soon as B'nai Yisrael left Egypt before the end of their predicted time, and this uh, would have caused them to experience future exiles. Top of the next uh, page, top of the next Amud, in order that they shouldn't have to suffer through this. Also, Lahem Sukkos, Hakodesh Baruch Hu made Sukkos, made uh, outdoor booths for them. Klomar, this means to say, Sheim Yizku. The message of the Sukkos to B'nai Yisrael was, if you merit it, you will be exempt from any future exiles through the Sukkos, through these booths that you're going to dwell in. And this is why the Pasuk was careful. That future generations should know specifically should take off Pitsesom in Mitzrayim immediately after B'nai Yisrael left Egypt, Nason Lahem Nechamazu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave them this comforting message. He protected them with the Anane HaKavod and he caused them to dwell in booths to say to them, I want you to uh, know that these sukkos can serve as your replacement for Golos. You are not, you are not, destined necessarily to have future experiences of exile in Shibud Malchios, because if you merit it, this dwelling in Sukkos can be a replacement for that, making them unnecessary. In order that the people would attempt and try their hardest to be righteous. And they wouldn't say, what benefit is there to us to try to be as righteous and as uh, meritorious as possible, im kach u kach, if no matter what, onu chayovim golus, we're going to be obligated to do future exiles, which is what exactly what they would have thought. Vim lo ha yu osim ha egel, and had they not stumbled with the sin of the egel, ha yu niftarim boze michov ha golus, they would in fact have been exempt from any future punishments of exile by dwelling in their sukkos. V'zehu hatam, and this is the reason, she'nishtane hanes shel anone hakovod, that the miracle of the anone hakovod is fundamentally different, mines ha'be'er ve'hamon, from the other two miracles that the Zerah Shimshon enumerated previously, the miracle of the well of water of Miriam and the mon that came b'schus Moshe, she'ahare zechiras hanes eno al ikar anone hakavod, because when we are told by the Torah to remember uh, the the protection that Hashem afforded the Jewish people when they left Mitzrayim, that's not specifically about the anone hakavod per se. Ella al mashi kifam. But rather, it's that he surrounded them with this protection. Take F. Bitsesom in Mitzrayim immediately when they left Mitzrayim, Mitama Nizkar Lael, from the reason that we've explained above, meaning, as Zerah Shimshon is saying, the message of the Sukkos, of, 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 the, of going out and dwelling in Sukkos, is to remind us specifically that B'nai Yisrael would not have had to uh, suffer any future Goliaths. And they would have been able, Hashem would have counted it and considered it 
they're dwelling in their sukkos in the midbar as if uh, that fulfilled any possible uh, need to be in uh, exile again. And had they not committed the Chet HaEgel, Bnei Yisrael would not have suffered any future ex exiles. And that's what makes uh, the, the mitzvah of the sukkah and then remembering the Anane HaKavod uh, such a unique and extraordinary message, not just the miracle of the protection, because if it had been the miracle of the protection, then it would have been equivalent to the Be'er and the Mon, and, there, and the question of how come those things aren't remembered would have been unanswered. One last paragraph uh, to go, and the Zer Shimshon will wrap uh, everything up, even though this is not his final paragraph in this piece. Vehine Avraham, and behold, Avraham Kfar Yadana, we already know, Shabir Hamalchios Le Yisrael Tovasam, that Avraham chose for Bnei Yisrael to suffer a, a future uh, subjugation of, uh, to other nations for Bnei Yisrael for their own good. Aval Hoel Sha Avram Chafetz Chesed, who, but since Avraham wanted to do the greatest possible kindness, he tried his best to exempt B'nai Yisrael from the pain of Golos. This is a reference by the Zerah Shimshon, this choosing that Avraham made to, to statements in Chazal that Hashem said to Avraham, uh, B'nai Yisrael can either, will either suffer from Shiva and Malchios, or they will suffer a terrible a, 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 a spiritual suffering in Gehenim, and Hashem said to Avram, I'm going to allow you to choose. And Avraham chose Shibud Malchios instead of, of, of the spiritual suffering, uh, of the intense spiritual suffering in uh, Gehedim. And so uh, why did he choose that, the Zerah Shimshon says? Uh, because, I'm sorry, after he chose that, uh, because he thought that would be, he knew that would be the best of the two options for B'nai Israel. After he did it, he thought he could even exempt them from Golas. And that which he did for the Malachim, certainly the whole time he was doing it, he was davening to Hashem that Hashem should do this for his descendants when they left Mitzrayim. And therefore he made booths for the Malachim. And he had them sit under the uh, the, the branches under the covering of the trees, so Hashem would do the same thing for his descendants, to exempt them from the punishment of Golos. And this connects to the fact that we require a sukkah nowadays to be a temporary dwelling, below diras keva, and not a permanent dwelling. Because a sukkah is in place of golos. I'm sorry. And exile uh, is it's appropriate to consider it something temporary and not permanent. And that's why Avram said, recline or lean under the tree, velo omar shvu, and he didn't say sit here under the tree, and he didn't provide chairs under the tree. The yeshiva mashma keva, because had they sat under the trees or had they sat in chairs, that would have implied something permanent. Elamishan ba'alma, but if someone is just leaning or reclining, derech arai, that is a temporary type of dwelling, and that is what the entire concept of the sukkah represents a, a, a replacement for gullus, a replacement for uh, the punishment of gullus. So let's, uh, let's recap here. The Zereshimshon started with two questions. Why two seemingly simple questions? Why didn't Abraham just give the malachim chairs and show them a little more respect? And even better, why didn't he bring them into his house? And the Zereshimshon has, uh, has opened up a whole new world of understanding to us by connecting through the Midrashim and through Chazals, uh, through Gemaras, connecting what was going on with Avram and the Malachim to the uh, experiences of B'nai Yisrael when they left Mitzrayim. And, he is, and, and through that, he has answered the questions. Why didn't Avraham give them chairs? Because even that simple act would have implied that he wanted them to sit 
permanently there, a more permanent type of dwelling. And Avram was, was insistent upon a temporary dwelling. So he told them to lean and recline under the tree. He wouldn't even give them a chair. In addition to that, why didn't he bring them into his home? Because the whole point of what he was doing was to put them as if they were in a sukkah and that would be in order for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to protect B'nai Yisrael when leaving Mitzrayim with Sukkos and with the Anane HaKavod, not just for the protection itself, but for the B'nai Yisrael to experience something that would be like a Golos and exempt them from all future Shibud Malchios. And the Zer Shimshon has demonstrated clearly that had B'nai Yisrael not committed tragically committed the Chet HaEgel, in fact, there would have been no future uh, experiences of Shibud Malchus and of Golas uh, and Be'ezus Hashem. Uh, there should be no more suffering and the least amount of suffering possible for B'nai Yisrael until Mashiach Tzidkenu comes and ends Shibud Malchus forever. Yashar Koch for joining us this evening, and we look forward, God willing, to learning Zerah Shimshon again next week.